Dear learners, welcome to Learning with Fun. Today, I warmly welcome you to the series of videos on rhetorical expressions or the figures of speech. This is the part two of the video in which I'll be discussing paradox, antithesis, epigram and oxymoron. I have already made a video on simile and metaphor. I'll leave the link in the description box. You can check that as well if you need the explanations of those two figures of speech. So without wasting a single second, let's get into it. Dear learners, right now I'll be discussing four figures of speech based on difference. But before I make a start, I would just like to tell you a few words. We all know that a diamond looks doubly bright or we can say it looks brighter if it is set against a black background. Why? The question will be answered in a second. Suppose you have a classmate named Tanushri and she is quite intelligent. She tops the class. Now another girl Neha comes in and gets admitted to the class. And you say Neha is quite intelligent. At that very moment, your friend whom you are talking to right now will ask you, is Neha more intelligent than Tanushri? That is what happens. In fact, we make our idea clearer by making a contrast consciously or unconsciously. Actually, if you say she is quite intelligent, you would definitely like to know how much intelligent? Is she more intelligent than the girl who tops our class? Actually, you are making a comparison with the girl who tops the class. Because you want to make your idea clear how much intelligent the new girl who has just come in is. So if you understand this little story kind of thing, you will understand the four figures of speech I'll discuss right now. The first one is antithesis. Look at that. It is a figure in which contrasted ideas or words are placed in a balanced form to emphasize the contrast. Actually, two contrasted words or ideas are placed in the form of a balance. And it is used just to emphasize the contrast as I have told you a story kind of thing. And you will understand that the same thing is seen here throughout the examples written over there. Example 1. Art is long, life is short. Just have a look. There are two clauses and all the clauses are having the same type of thing. They are grammatically the same. Just have a look. Art is long and life is short. Two ideas are juxtaposed in the form of a balance emphasize the contrast united we stand divided we fall if you look at the two words in the first example long and short they are two contrasting words again we have two contrasting words in the second example as well united and divided and if we generally say united we stand that makes the idea clearer but if we want to make it clearer then we can say divided we fall. We can add this little piece of information to the information I have just told you united we stand. So it looks nice. It sounds well. What about the third example? Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Again two contrasting words reign and serve are there and these two ideas reigning in heaven reigning in hell and serving in heaven these two ideas are placed in the form of a balance to make the contrast or to make the idea clearer the second example goes to R is human to forgive divine again the same contrasting ideas are placed together in the form of a balance give every man thine ear but few thy voice is the fifth example it is a line by Shakespeare and it means that you should not speak to 
all of all the persons you meet or you should give your ear that means you should listen to everybody you meet you come across but you should give your voice that means you should speak your thoughts to a few well the sixth example man proposes god disposes two contrasting ideas are placed again now i would just like you to know a very nice example taken from a tale of two cities written by charles dickens it was the best of times it was the worst of times it was the age of wisdom it was the age of foolishness it was the epoch of belief it was the epoch of incredulity it was the season of light it was the season of darkness and for your convenience i have just circled the contrasting words well we would move on to the next one which is epigram it is a sharp brief and polished saying that by causing temporary shock rouses our attention to some striking thought underneath there must be a contradiction in the expression but the contradiction is not real it is apparent oh god it's a long expression and we have to understand the points which are hidden here first of all it is a sharp comment it is a sharp statement it is a witty statement that means it, the statement is full of wit full of intelligence and it is brief that means it is short polished saying and by causing a temporary shock actually when we listen to an example of a of an epigram we just get shocked we just think that it seems to be absurd how could that happen how could that be actually that is what happens so it rouses our attention to some striking thought so if we closely examine or if we think about the line or the statement given closely we would be able to understand that there is a striking thought there is a deep thought underlying there must be a contradiction definitely in epigram as well we have a kind of contradiction which is found in the expression but the contradiction is not real that means it seems absurd at first that the statement could not be right we must be thinking that at first but it is not real it is apparent that means it appears but it is not real look at that trick which i have written down the first point is that it seems absurd at first so if we look at the statement or if we listen to the statement we would be thinking oh it seems absurd how could that be possible the second one is that we get a shock and that's why we get a shock and after getting the shock we would have a close examination of what is actually stated and we will get to know the deeper meaning underlying it let's look at the first example failures are the pillars of success definitely the question arises how could failures be the pillars of success but after a close examination we can get to know that failures make someone experienced and that experience works really wonders to get the success and that is how failures could be the pillars of success the next example goes cowards die many times before their death now the question again arises how could a human being doesn't matter be it a coward be it a brave person it doesn't matter at all but the question is how could a human being die more than once after a close examination of the statement we can get to know that cowards do really die many times before their death how they continuously suffer from the fear of death and that is how they die many times before their death the third example 
our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought definitely we just get confused that how could the sweetest songs of ours could be telling us the saddest thoughts after a close examination we would just get to know that the songs that give us or that talk about light thoughts do not impress us at all on the other hand the songs that tell us of the saddest thoughts of the deepest thoughts of our life attract us more than the light songs now we would just like to have a comparative study of the two figures of speech i have just stated <coughs> antithesis and epigram there is contradiction in the statement the same is the case with epigram the contradiction is real in the case of antithesis but in the case of an epigram the contradiction is apparent that means it is not real it appears to be so but it actually is not so the third point is that the statement does not seem absurd or give a shock if we think of the example art is long life is short there is nothing absurd in the statement but the statement seems absurd and gives a shock in the case of an epigram think of the example cowards die many times before their death the fourth point written over here is that the statement can be easily understood we don't have to closely look at the meaning of the word or the sentence given but in the case of an epigram we need to closely examine and after that we will get a deeper meaning underlying the statement now i would just like to move on to the next figure of speech which is called paradox it is almost the same as epigram now the question arises what's the difference between a paradox and an epigram the difference is that paradoxes are only contrary to received conception or received opinion this is the only difference what we generally believe in is just contrary to what is stated in a paradox now look at the first example nine soldiers out of 10 are born fools actually we believe that soldiers are really brave they are really intelligent but actually this is not so this is what is said by blandsley the mouthpiece of george barnard shaw in arms and the man actually the soldiers are fools that is why they are ready to die because they they don't care for death so it's a kind of foolishness well let's look at the second example silence is sometimes more eloquent than words generally we believe that we definitely have to say something to make our ideas clear or to make our thoughts clear but actually it is not so all the time sometimes some suppose someone asks me a question and i remain silent and this gives the answer to the question she asks so she gets the answer for my being silent well now we would just move on to the next figure of speech which is called oxymoron it is a figure of speech in which contradictory words not ideas which is there in the antithesis so two contradictory words or contradictory words are placed side by side i have underlined the words side by side that has to be focused on for raising a striking effect so we would have a striking effect and there would be contradictory words opposite words and they would be placed side by side he is carefully careless now the question is how could one be carefully careless 
somebody is careless and he is being careless is much more carefully thought about that means he is careless he is consciously careless that means he is conscious and that is how he shows he shows his carelessness by being careful so he is carefully showing his carelessness that's the meaning of the sentence okay regularly irregular so if he say somebody is regularly irregular her irregularity is so that we could call it regular that means suppose, suppose uh, a girl a student is admitted to a class and she goes to the class once a month so she is irregular and that is what happens month after month so if that happens month after month that becomes regular so her irregularity becomes regular well i would not talk much because the video is going to be very very lengthy i'll just talk about the trick written over here, over there contradictory words not ideas that is the first trick you have to remember the second one is it seems absurd how could one be regular regularly irregular how could one be carefully careless so it it just gives a shock at first it seems absurd the statement seems absurd for the first time but if we have a close look if we understand something if we try to understand something deeply we would just get the meaning of it properly pretty ugly and open secret so these are the examples written over here thanks for watching